Praise God, it is so good to be back here at church on a Wednesday night, just getting excited and just preaching God's word. I'd still say and tell you each and every time that I come here, I miss you all so much. I miss you. Men, Pastor, you know, we get to see each other some, and thank God for that. Thank God that we can see each other, but I miss you all so much, and I know each and every one of you are praying for us. I know that we're praying for you all, but it's going to be soon. It's going to be soon. We're going to be back in this church building. We're going to be worshiping together. We're going to be hugging. We're going to be just getting excited for Jesus. And I cannot wait till that time comes. And it's coming soon. Just get ready. Just trust God. God's got this. He's always had this. And we've got to have that faith and trust in him. Before we get started, we're going to be talking about a true foundation. But before that, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just come this evening thanking you. For all your blessings, for all your love, for your children that's not able to be here physically but are here spiritually right now. We just can't wait till that time when we can come back and hug and just love one another, physically touching and, and, and just sharing our, our, what's been going on in our lives and just having that time for one another. I just pray, Lord, that's going to be real soon. But God, it's in your time and not ours. We trust you. We have the faith. Lord, we just we know that you're in control. You have been in control again the whole time, and you're still in control, Lord, and I thank you for that. Now, Lord, I just pray that every ear, every heart, every mind is open to hear your word tonight, Lord. Don't let them see nothing about John Russell. Let them see Jesus. Let the Holy Spirit. He is the teacher. I'm not smart enough, and I'm not capable enough to bring your word. Only you can do that, Holy Spirit. So I'm praying right now, Lord, that you touch hearts and you let them just take this in, Lord, and do with it what they need to do with it. God, you're preaching to whoever has got their heart and mind open right now. So God, bless them, touch them, and we just want to say right now, we love you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. You know, God is so good. It's been a, it's been a good week for me. I know uh, uh, everything's been going great. God's blessed me blessed us. I shared with Pastor that uh, this past two or three days, uh, uh, like Friday and Saturday, and even Sunday, our internet just shut off. We didn't have nothing. We could get nothing, and we couldn't watch nothing, and I was so disappointed because Sunday morning, uh, we get up, and the first thing we do is start watching at 10 o'clock the service here, but we couldn't get it, so we started praying, and, and this kind of was kind of a little down because we couldn't get it in the and by 11 o'clock, our servers come back on full time. So we got to hear Pastor preach the word. And I needed that. I needed that. And I pray that's what you're doing right now. I pray that you're watching and you're taking this uh, word that God's got for you in and be obedient to do what he wants you to do. Again, we're talking uh, tonight about a true foundation. What is a true foundation? Well, let me say that what we're going to be talking about is the foundation of Jesus Christ. He is the true family. He is the rock. Now, I want to go to Scripture, and we're going to be, if you want to get your Bibles or if you want to watch here, because I love the way Pastor's got it here where you can go along with me and see this uh, word for word. We're going in 1 Corinthians, and we're going to start in verse, uh, uh, chapter, uh, verse three, uh, ver or chapter 3, verse 1. And it goes right here. It says, And I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to carnal. As to babes in Christ, I fed you with milk and not with solid food. For until now, you were not able to receive it. And even now, you are still not able. For you are still carnal. For where there are envy, strife, and divisions among you, are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? I want to take this time to uh, talk about the foundation that... This country, the United States, was based on and started on. You know, I go back and look to the presidents like George Washington, Abraham Lincoln. You know, when they first started this country, when this country was first started, uh, they based this on Jesus Christ. They prayed. They literally prayed. If you go back and study history, they literally prayed and opened their Bibles and read their Bibles when they come together as a council because of this country. Listen. This country, look at, your, look at your dollar bills. It says, in God we trust. That was started by our forefathers who started this country on Jesus Christ, the great foundation, the true foundation. And look at it today. 
Look at it today. That's where Paul is talking about we're mere men. We're foolish men because we have let this country go haywire. We're not on that foundation no more. We're not on that solid foundation of Jesus Christ. And God says, I'm tired of it. So he allows things to happen in our lives to get our attention, to, to let us really understand what that true foundation is. You know, we can look back at what's going on with this coronavirus, and I, and I say it all the time. you got to speak Jesus when you say that because he is the only one that's going to take care of this. But uh, through this virus going around and everything, he had to open some eyes. And, you know, truly, I started seeing at the very beginning, I started turning on the news, and I started seeing that the president and the, and the governors were, were starting to work together. The Democrats and the Republicans looked like they were starting to work together. I said, oh, God, you got this. You got their attention. And then I just turned it on this morning. And I looked and I listened, and they're all hitting heads again. See, sin, from the very beginning of time, when Adam sinned, sin has been in this world. And when sin gets in this world and stays in this world until Jesus finally comes back and takes us home, we have to deal with things that's happening in this world that's not right. We don't have to agree with it. We don't even have to go along with it. But we got to live in it. Let's get our priorities right, church. Amen. Let's get our priorities right and get back on that true foundation that our forefathers started this country by and stand on that same foundation of Jesus Christ. That is the only foundation we need to be on. That's the true foundation that we need to look and understand that no other foundation, no other thing, no other person can do anything except Jesus Christ. And we need to believe that. We need to get it back in our hearts and we need to get it back in our minds. Verses 4, starting in verse 4, says, For when one says, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are you not carnal? Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos, but ministers through whom you believe? As the Lord gave to each one, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. Hallelujah. You know, I want to think, stop and just think about uh, uh, back in Acts chapter 9, where, where Paul, uh, I love to preach this, the pastor, he's preached it several times too, but when Paul was Saul, and Saul was on the road to Damascus. And he never did make it to Damascus. He was heading there. And this great light shined. And it blinded Paul. And he fell to his knees. And, and he, he, he cried out. And Jesus says, what are you doing, Paul? Or Saul, what are you doing? And he cried out. And he says, who are you, Lord? I love that because he already knew who the Lord was. But he still questioned, who are you, Lord? He had fear upon him. And listen, he was blind for three days. And Jesus said, he says, it's me. Jesus of Nazareth, the one you have been persecuting. Listen to me, church. This country has been persecuting Jesus Christ. We've been, we make fun of him. We do everything that's not right. We allow, we allow homosexuality just to, to run rapid. We allow uh, people just to kill little babies, innocent babies, and we say it's okay. We're not on that foundation of Jesus no more. We have slipped that foundation, and we're doing wrong. We're, we're just not doing right, and we need to start doing better. We need to get back on that foundation, that true foundation. Listen, when Paul was blinded, he seemed more for three days blinded than most of us see today as Christians with their eyes open. Because that was the time and the period that he was with Jesus for three solid days with, while he was blinded. See, Paul was a was a, a killer. He killed Christian people. He killed people that talked about Jesus. You know, that's all he cared about was to destroy people that mentioned Jesus or talk anything about Christianity. But now, he, he never looked back the minute that he got blinded. Amen. He never looked back. Are you looking back? Oh, Are we looking back? We're not supposed to look back. We're supposed to go forward. We're supposed to look straight towards Jesus. And listen to me. Sometimes God says, I'm going to blind you. He is, he's allowing this <clears throat> coronavirus to blind us. So we can stop and say, God, you're the only one can fix this. You're the only one can take care of this problem. I don't care. Listen, <clears throat> I lifted up the doctors. And I lifted up the nurses 
when I preached on Easter Sunday. And I still applaud them. I do. I still applaud them. And listen, I lifted up our president. And I still think he's trying to do the best job he can. <clears throat> but I'm telling you this. All that said, none, none of them can outdo what God's got for us. It's all about Jesus. It's not about our president. It's not about our doctors. It's not about our nurses. And thank God for them. But it's about what Jesus is going to do. He is the only fixer-upper. He's the only ruler. And I thank you for that. I thank him for that. <clears throat> and we need to do that. We need to thank God more. We're not thanking God enough. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 7 through 8, it says, So then neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters, but God who gives the increase. Now he who plants and he who waters are one, and each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. Amen. You. you know, I want to talk about that just a minute. I met Pastor Joy before he became a pastor in this church. But I never will forget the, the day that we talked to Pastor Joy about being the pastor in this church. And we met in that office. And we both, we sat there and we looked at each other. And God was dealing with both of us. And we talked and asked questions and things. And we both knew that we was on the same page. Because one of the things the pastor asked me, he says, how do you... What do you look ahead of this church? And I said, I just want to worship Jesus. That's all I care about is just worshiping Jesus. And he knew then how my heart was. And I knew how his heart was. And we knew then that we were one. We become one at that time. And you know, right here it talks about uh, Paul and uh, Apollos. See, they became one because they were ministers of God. So they became one. They work together, but let me tell you what, God gets all the glory. Hallelujah. God gets all the glory. Just because me and Pastor work together and we're one, listen, we give him the glory. Amen. It's not about me up here preaching. It's not about Pastor up here preaching. It's about Jesus Christ. It's about what Holy Spirit is doing. It's about what God is doing with this church because of God doing it. It's not about us. We do the part we're supposed to do, but it's all about Jesus Christ. And we got to remember that. we got to stand on that ground. That's the true foundation is, is Jesus Christ. It's not, pastor's not the foundation. I'm not the foundation. And it, it, just because we're one, we're still not the foundation. It's truly Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Excuse me, my throat has been aggravating me because of my allergies, so I've got to have a drink of water. Thank you, Jesus. I want to go now to uh, 1 Corinthians 3, 9 through 10. And it says, For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. You are God's building. According to the grace of God which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundations and another builds on it, but let each one take heed how he bids on, builds on it. Now, Y'all know that you see a bricklayer up there laying brick, but y'all know that uh, most of you know that I, I build houses for a living. I've done it. My dad was a builder. I took after him and I build. And uh, I want to say this, that a foundation that's not right, the house will never be right. Amen. You know, I look at this. I look at the guy that's, that's squaring the footer up. If he don't get that footer square, then that house is out of square. If he don't... The, the guy that's pouring the concrete and putting the steel, if he pours the concrete and don't put the steel in it, listen, that house will eventually crumble. So it takes everybody to do their part. If I'm going to do a good job building, then the foundation is, is the main thing of a house. It's got to be right. Well, that's the same thing here for this country. If this country is not on the Jesus Christ, that foundation that, again, that our forefathers started, this country is going to fall. The Bible says a, a country or a nation that, that's, that's uh, not right together, that's having problems, that's not doing what they're called to do, they can't stand. It's going to fall. Because, see, that's why this country is falling now. Because we're not in agreement with one another. Our leadership, who was I thought was doing better and was at one point, now they're bumping heads and hitting heads again and, and going through all this and all that because they, they're not 
putting Jesus Christ first in their life as leaders. You know, I look at this church. I want to I lift the, uh, our elders up right now. Hallelujah. You know, men pastor are the pastors here. Uh, I, I call him the, the main pastor, and I'm the associate pastor, but in his eyes and heart, that's not right. But anyway, that's just the way I feel, so I'm not going to argue with you. But anyway, you know, for us to do our job, to have that foundation right, we got to have elders to do their job. And I am so proud of our elders. Listen, they're working behind the scenes right now. You might not see them, you might not hear from them, but they're working. Listen, they're probably working more than they do with y'all in this church building because there's so much going on. And that's what about pastor. Listen, I don't want to put him on a pedestal, but God's told me to say this, and, and I know that's what he wants. Listen, he comes here and he prepares for Tuesday night. He prepares for Wednesday night. He prepares for Saturday night. He prepares for Sunday morning. I'm telling you, he's doing more work now than he did with y'all here because he's got to get all this uh, things fixed for the screens. He's got to get record everything, put it all in place. He's got to be here for even me as I'm here preaching here this Wednesday evening. But he is doing more work than he ever has now. And I know, and I know he's not saying, look at me, because he won't do that. But I'm just saying, I know what God's doing and what he's using Joy to do. And Joy's never stopped and never backed up. But listen, the elders are the same way. Yes. If the elders is doing their job, then it makes me and pastor's job easier. Yes. It makes our job easier. Listen, I want to look at the deacons. If the deacons that, that takes care of the people in the church. Listen, I have, I have had deacons to call me. That's not even my, my head deacon. They call me and say, John, do you need anything? Is there anything that you need? Uh, is you and Mary both okay? And I think, praise God for that. And we are okay and everything's going good, but it means a whole lot when another deacon calls me and asks me that question. Then my head deacon that's over me, that, that, that takes care of me, he calls me all the time and prays for me. Sometimes he says, John, you're a hard guy to reach. And I, I'm sure I am. But when he does, I get to talk to him. He prays for me. He always makes sure that we're, me and Mary's okay also. And, and I thank God for that. See, if our deacons is not doing their job, the elders are not doing their job, then men pastor can't do our job. Amen. And we all work together. And then we look at our secretary. Listen, y'all have no idea what this secretary does. This secretary of this church, if we didn't have her here, listen, Amen. this church could not run. This church would not be able to do the, the paperwork. There's so much out there. You have... Y'all have no clue what this girl goes through. And I just want to commend her for it and thank her for it. But if she don't want to be patted on the back. I know her too well. But listen, without her doing her job, the elders doing their job, the deacons doing their job, me and pastor doing our job, we all got to work together to do our job before the foundation of this church can go because we're on the foundation of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And he expects us, listen to us as leaders, listen, he expects us as leaders to do our job. And we don't do us. If one of us don't do our job, then that, that starts to crumble. That foundation starts to quiver and start messing up. And then you got your teachers. And then you got your ones that takes care of the food pantry. You got the ones that does the clothing. You got the ones that this takes care of the church, cleans it and everything. You got so many people in here that all of us has got to do our job that God's called us to do for this foundation to be the foundation that it's supposed to be. And we go back to our country. See, our country is not doing their job right now. They're not doing, they're not putting Jesus first. They're saying everything's okay to do this and do that. Live, live with the world. Do what the world says. And, and people are getting excited now, right now, wanting to go back to doing everything. And they need to slow down and say, listen, it's in God's timing, not man's timing. And I pray that our leadership will get together and, and come to Jesus and cry out to him. See, I told you all before that at 8 o'clock that my phone goes off and we're praying for this country to be healed. This, what we all need to do all over the country is to do the same thing. Amen. I don't care what religion you are. As long as you know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, get on your knees. Whatever time. It don't have to be 8 o'clock. Set your own time. But get on your knees every day and cry out to God and say, please, God, heal this land. We want the foundation that you created. You know, I think about the time that God created this world and spoke it into existence. And he told Adam, he says, Adam, all you have to do, I've got the foundation all built. It's a perfect world. It's a world that's no sin in it. There's a world, there's no weeds in it. Everything's beautiful. The garden I gave you, the trees, they're all beautiful. 
pleasant to smell the flowers, just to, just to enjoy. I'll send you animals that you can pet and rub and just let them love on you. You've got a perfect world, a perfect foundation, and all you've got to do is just oversee it. Do your part, and that foundation will never quiver. And the first thing he did is sin. The first thing he did is sin. And that sin come in to the world and that foundation start to shake and start to crack that, that God had created and God had took care of. It started shivering and then the next thing you know then sin is just wiped all over the whole world. And then God had to destroy the world. He had to take time to, uh, with Noah and build an ark and destroy the world and let everybody die except Noah and his family. He said, I'll start it all over new. I'll start a new foundation, a new one. The first one I did was perfect until sin come in. And now I, I killed everybody. And God did it. He destroyed it. It wasn't Satan. Jesus did God itself. Holy Spirit destroyed it. And now he's starting over fresh again with the new foundation. And what happens? We do the same thing. Sin's still in here. Do the same thing, same thing. What's happening right now, same thing. It's a poor, bad foundation. So then he finally says, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll send my son. I'll let my son, just like I preached on Easter Sunday, I'll let my son come and take his beating that he didn't deserve. I'll let him be spit upon. I'll let him take his, have his clothes taken off him, and I'll have him hung on a cross. God allowed this hung on a cross with nails in his hand and nails in his feet and, and made fun of and, and, and spit upon and beat till you couldn't even tell he was a man. And God says, now I gave you a perfect foundation. Who is my son, Jesus Christ? So what are you going to do with him? He's perfect. He, he's a lamb that was perfect. And he says, I'm going to let his blood take care of you. I'm going to let the blood that he shed come on top of you. And that blood is going to heal you. That blood is going to cleanse you. And there's nothing, if you'll just keep your eyes on me, that can harm you or hurt you in any way. And what happened? Sin. Sin come in again. Yeah, Jesus died for sin. I know there's some of you thinking right now, yeah, John, I can do this and I can do that and all I got to do is ask Jesus, forgive me. I'm still going to heaven. You're right. If you truly know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you truly ask him in your heart and you said yes to him, you are. You're bound for heaven. But that's still not the whole story. See, God expects us to worship Jesus every day of our life and put him first for what he done for each and every one of us. And he says, listen, you keep sinning, then the consequences is coming. It's coming. What are you doing? What are you doing? With, what are you doing with Jesus right now? The true foundation. What are you doing with him? Are you starting to cause the foundation to crack again? 1 Corinthians 3, 16 through 17 says, do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy. Which temple you are? I'm going to tell you, if that don't touch you, if that don't wake you up, something's wrong. As I said earlier, if you truly ask Jesus Christ in your life, and you truly meant it, and God knows and you know if you truly are saved, the minute that you ask Jesus, the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, He came to live in this temple. He came in this body, this temple. This is the church, people. Listen to me. This is the church. This is the temple. Wherever you go, you take that temple with you. Let me tell you something. There's people putting things in this temple in their mouth physically that's not right. Hey, I, I've done it. I've had to ask God to forgive me. I put things in, in here that I maybe overeat. Maybe, you know, something that I shouldn't have. Maybe something I drank when I was younger. You know, I've never took drugs, but, you know, I've drank beer before. 
And I'm not saying this, and I'm not judging nobody. <laughs> it's not my place to judge you. You do what you want to do, but I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to take care of this temple as the best I can now. I wish I learned it years ago when I was younger. But I'm going to take care of this temple. See, not only, listen to me now, church, not only physically putting stuff in your mouth, what about with your eyes? What about with your mind? There's some of you right now that's looking at pornography. There's some of you right now that turns on uh, Pastor Joy, Pastor John, listen to him on preaching, and then the next day he turns on pornography. Huh, I'm touching somebody right now. Listen, you keep putting that pornography in. You're not going to hell if you truly love, love Jesus. But the, Bible, the word says right here, God will destroy him that, destro that messes up that temple. And you know how God does that? This is what the Holy Spirit showed me as I was doing this study. How God does that is he allows you to do whatever you want to do free will. And listen, there is consequences to sin. Sin is forgiven. Jesus whipped it all. It's no more. It's done. It's taken care of. You will be eternity with Jesus. But you're in consequences right now. And them consequences will destroy this temple. The consequences that you choose, the consequences that you, the, whatever you want, whatever you desire in this body that you just think you've got to have, then you're destroying the temple yourself. I'm destroying the temple if I choose to let anything come in my body that's not right, if I look at things that's not right, if I let things come in my mind, because eventually it destroys my heart, not only spiritually, but physically. So where are you at now? Where are you at now? Do you not know that you are the temple of God? My goodness, that right there should give you cold chills. And that the Spirit of God dwells in you? My goodness, you're taking Jesus places that you don't need to go. You're putting people first in your life instead of Jesus, your own family, your church people. Listen, you're putting things before Jesus, and that's what he says, I am tired of this, and that's why this country is falling. It's because we're not putting him first. Listen, be the Christian that you're called to be. When you walk out of a church door that next day while you're walking out in the world, be the same out there that you are in here. Amen. Don't change. God knows you still got Jesus with you. He never leaves you. He says, I promise you, I'll never leave you or forsake you. You sometimes put him in hiding. You can't hide Jesus. You might physically think you can, but spiritually you cannot hide him. He's there. He's dwelling in your mind. He's dwelling in your heart. He's trying to get you to change from listening to the devil and listen to him. Let's get our priorities straight, y'all. Let's get them right. Let's take care of the temple that God has blessed us with, that God has gave us, and let's do what is right. Let's get this country back on the foundation where it was started before the horn blows. It's getting ready to blow. I know y'all hear me and pastors say that all the time, but I'm telling you, it's getting ready to blow. It's getting ready to happen. Be careful. Be careful. My last scripture for tonight, 1 Corinthians 3, 21 through 23. If this don't touch you, then something's wrong. You need to check yourself. Therefore, let no one boast in men. Don't listen. Don't be bragging about me and pastor. We do God's work, and, you know, it's okay, if, I guess, to pat each other on the back sometimes and say, you're doing good. But do it in a way that you say, Jesus is working through you. It's all God, pastor, that the word you preach Thank God that you're able to get up here and preach. But God did it. Jesus did it. And that's what God's telling us right now. Don't boast in men. For all things. What's all mean? All. For all things are yours. Whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or things present or things to come. All are yours. And you all might listen to this. Listen, church, this here should make you want to jump up and shout. And you are Christ, and Christ is God's. Woo! Praise God. Give God praise for that. I mean, my goodness. Listen, this whole world belongs to God. He allowed us to have Christ, who is the center of this world. He is the head. He is the center of this whole world. And he allows us to live in a world that's full of sin. But he allows us to shine that bright light with Jesus because we've got Christ. We have got Christ. And listen, that's what we need to, that's what we need to put that foundation back on is Christ. Quit letting 
people quit letting things on TV change your life. Let Jesus be the one to change your life. Let Jesus be the one to show you the right way and do the right thing. Let's, let's start praying that this foundation, that this country will get back on the foundation of Jesus, that rock. You know, as I told you before, this church was, was started by God in a, in a barn. And this church was on a, built on a foundation of Jesus Christ. This building here, thank God we got it. But this building here tomorrow, a tornado could wipe it out. But this church, Open Arms Church, is still going to be standing. Amen. Because it's built on Jesus Christ. We'll go to the barn down there, that old rough barn down there, and we'll have church there. It doesn't matter what building you're in. Listen, the foundation of Open Arms will never fail. And I know a lot of you are saying, well, John, how can you say that? I'm telling you the truth. It was built on Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So anything that was built on Christ cannot fail. The building don't matter. Listen, you are the church. And we'll come together wherever. Listen, we're coming together right now. And you're not even in the building. And we're coming together right now. We are, we're, we're spiritually together. We're binding. Look at your fingers. Do your fingers like that. Put your hands together. Put them like that. Listen to me. That's us. We're, nothing can pull us apart from Christ. Nothing. Satan cannot snatch us out of God's hand once we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. So I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what you're dealing with. I don't care if you've got uh, problems of worry or, or you've got physical sickness. I don't care. Listen, turn your eyes on the true foundation, and that's Jesus Christ. And watch him deliver you out of all that bondage that you're in right now. I don't care if you're just getting so tired of being at home right now. Get in a closet and get with Jesus. Amen. And let that foundation in your house start to be come together and get solid again because you put the foundation of Jesus and you're standing on that instead of on you. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you created this world. You spoke it into existence. And I just want to thank you, Lord, that you even sent your son, Jesus Christ, to, to start this world over in a new and a better way that we're on the rock of Jesus Christ, that true foundation. And God, I pray that we all turn from anything that's not right in our life and we give it to you, Lord. God, you're a good God. I just want to thank you. I just want to say I love you. I want to pray that you just touch this the, the open arms church people right now and put your love and arms around them. Let them feel right now that you're still hugging, Lord. There's nothing to stop us from hugging you. And God, we thank you for that. And you're still hugging us. And you always will. God, we love you. We praise you. And we thank you for what you're doing and what you're going to do in the future, Lord. And I can't wait till that horn goes off. And men pastors are going to race to get their place. We love you. Praise you in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Love you, church. Love you so much.